Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to do a TV talk on The Following. This is one of those shows where I would see commercials and not know what the hell it's about, like The Americans. I still don't know what that show's about, even though I've watched just a random episode. But I decided, you know what? I was a YouTuber, I think, that was talking about it. I'm like, I already started watching like five seconds into one episode, and for some reason I just stopped. I'm like, I'm going to just keep watching it because I just got through watching The Fall with Jamie Dornan in it, and I'm not gonna do a TV talk on that necessarily, like, unless you guys want me to, so let me know if you do. Um, it was really dark, and this was really dark, but it was so up my alley in a really twisted way. Um, so the following I'm going to give you a synopsis of and talk a little bit generally about the show as a whole, and then I will warn you when I wanna talk about the finale or the last two episodes. I'm pretty sure it was just the finale that it made my heart do things. So I'm, it's kind of like the non-spoiler spoiler thing. So right now everything's all non-spoilery. What the show is about is there is the serial killer. He killed 14 girls and was caught, but he's just not some, I'm killing them because you know, killing people feels good. No, he's so sophisticated and twisted and it's oh so disturbing. So anyway, the killer's name is Joe Carroll and he's in prison now, right? And that doesn't stop him. That really doesn't stop him. He has this cult of serial killer followers. Yes, that's where the name comes in. He was a professor of literature and he's really into Edgar Allan Poe. If you've ever read any Edgar Allan Poe, I've read uh, Fall of the House of Usher, I've read a little bit of The Raven, and then I read, what was the other one? Telltale Heart or something like that, but I feel like I know a lot about them now. Oh, and then Annabelle Lee. That po that's a poem, right? That's a poem. Um, so like, I know a little bit about Poe and stuff, and that's who he's like mainly influenced by. But that's just not it. He does like, he's inspired by like these gothic romantic literature things. And so when he would kill people, he wasn't just killing them, he was creating art. It's twisted. And some of the ways that he would kill these girls were stabbing their eyes out because there's a lot of eye imagery and symbolism and allegories all throughout a lot of Poe's works. And so everything means something. The way that he kills them means something. Yes, he is, he's insane in the way that yes, he wants to kill them, but it's not just he wants to kill them. He is so sophisticated in it. And now the entire plot, I guess, of the TV series is that he's now writing another book on it. He wrote a book before and it was, it was kind of a flop. And now he's, you know, going for round two. And then there is this FBI agent, well, former FBI agent, he's not anymore, who based, who got Carol, put him away, all that jazz. But what happened with him is Carol stabbed him in the heart and basically, he has a pacemaker now. And so that's kind of his setback for a lot of things. It's just, there's so many storylines. I honestly, I have definitely watched a lot of these like serial killer type things. I used to be really into Law and Order. I don't know, I'm weirdly into that kind of stuff lately. And I didn't see 98% of what happened in the show coming. I didn't see any of it coming. It just blew my mind on just, uh, uh, because okay, so many people die, right? I'm not saying who, I'm not saying if it's someone important. I'm just, people die a lot in the show and at some point, I'd be like, yeah, that would happen. But then, the, and, oh, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. Um, you don't see a lot of it coming. Let's just say that. This show is really extremely gory. I am a horror movie fanatic. I love gore, so it doesn't bother me. I squirmed a little bit with the eye stabbing thing. That made me squirm. Even on American Horror Stories last night's episode, that made me squirm. Eyes. Ugh, because I have contacts. I poke myself in the eye on a daily basis and I'm just thinking, I know how much my finger hurts, okay? I'm just, oh. Oh, and then there was this one thing in the finale that mm, it got me so bad, but I will talk about that right about now, actually. I'm going to start talking about spoilers and stuff for this, mostly the finale. I mean, it's going to spoil the season in general. So seriously, don't watch this if you haven't watched uh, the entire series and series, I mean season, whoops. So don't watch this if you haven't watched the entire season because it is... Oh, the biggest spoiler, and it won't be as enjoyable, I promise you. It's because Carol is like writing this whole story to go along with it, and so it's like you're seeing the story unfold, and then you're saying, well, that's, no, that's too predictable. He won't do that, or he'll do this, but then he doesn't, and then he, oh. So I don't want to spoil the ending for you, so don't watch this if you haven't seen the whole thing. So I'll see you guys later, and you come back when you do watch it, and we'll talk all about that. Okay, so that finale, that finale, <laughs> Parker, that, that, I was... 
I was crying. I'm not gonna lie, I was totally crying. With, with Mike earlier, I was like, no, 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 you can't kill him. He's my favorite, he's my favorite. And then he did it and I was so shocked because at that point I'm like, everyone dies. It's not surprising to me if he does die. Like I almost expected, I didn't want it to happen, but I expected it. But then with Parker and the box bearing, that was the thing I was talking about before. I think that was in the finale, maybe the episode before the finale. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I was like having the, the tightening of the chest and the lungs. And I was like, oh, 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 I can't do that. Oh my God. I expected her to live actually. I thought because I don't know. I don't know what I expected. I didn't want her to die. I was thinking, okay, she they're not going to do the cheesy thing where like they do the CP, it's called CPR, right? I hope it's called that, the CPR thing. And then she doesn't breathe, but then, you know, he goes over and sues the guy and then she breathes. I wasn't expecting that because I thought that was too cheesy for the show. Oh my God, whoever wrote this show, I want to marry them in a really weird way. I don't know. I feel like they're geniuses. Genius, I, genius. I don't know how many people wrote this. Oh my god, but uh, I didn't want her to die. I was so crying. She was the one I was upset with the most. I mean, that's excluding when Claire was stabbed at the end. I mean, when Kevin ba what's his name? Kevin Bacon? Ryan. When Ryan was stabbed at the end, I was like, oh, but I kind of I expect him to live, right? I mean, I've seen season two trailers. I know he's alive, and I also know Carol's alive. Commercials. I'm not spoiling anything for you. It's on television, and you will find out the first episode, okay? I don't feel bad about that. But even with Claire being stabbed, I was like, oh, that's, oh, I didn't expect that. Well, okay, that's a lie. I kind of expected something bad to happen. Maybe not that exactly, but something bad. I don't know. It was just, it was going along too well. And I knew he wasn't dead. And so I was like, oh, he's in the apartment. Don't let her go in there alone. And then the takeout guy, I was like, he's a cult follower. Don't trust anybody ever. The thing for this entire show, I'm getting Corey to watch it. And I'm just telling him, just like, don't trust anybody ever. Don't trust anybody ever. And Jacob, oh, he was kind of one that I was weirdly attached to. Like, I get that he was really something wrong. I, we never even really pinpointed why it was, I don't understand that completely. And it doesn't really bug me that we don't understand that. That's just like, I kind of was attached to him in an odd way, but it's because he had a, bits of good still. Like he had humanity still. And I, I really wanted him to just flip around. I wanted him to take the fake deal and, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. And then when they had that one chick come in and she's like, oh, I'm going to take the deal. She, I saw hairpins. I'm like, you stupid people, you stupid people. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Oh, like I wouldn't let them have shoelaces. Any, no, oh, this freaks me out. It's like, don't trust anybody ever. Huh. So I'm really excited to see what the second season is going to hold because now I'm, pre I'm pretty sure how Joe was saying, oh, this could be like this complete rewrite and how he didn't, he no longer wanted Claire. And I'm thinking that he's going to say, okay, complete rewrite, or maybe this is the twist in the story. I don't know, but I could see this going a thousand different ways and I'm nervous and I'm excited. I already set my DVR to record it and I'm glad that I started watching it now so I don't have to wait too terribly long. But yeah, let me know all of your thoughts on there in the comments. I pretty much said this through one take. I didn't even stutter. I'm so proud of myself it's because I literally just got through watching it like 10 minutes ago and I still have a lot of feels and I watched it all in like maybe a two day period, two and a half, something like that. And I do have classes at the same time and a homework and whatnot. So yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah, let me know all your thoughts down there in the comments. I'm talking 5 million miles an hour, but I'm also going to finish another video before I have to go to class. So I will see you guys later next time on Book Room Stock. Bye.